Hello, hello. Okay, sorry. Whew. Why coordinate? I think that this is an especially important question given that many of the biggest problems we have today, climate change, poverty, economic inequality, all of these things require global action, global collective action. And yet, I mean, just looking at the headlines we have today, looking at all of the different things that are happening around, all around the world, in Europe with the Charlie Hebdo killings, in the US with the killings of, with killings of Muslims, or even in Russia where gay people are being killed, I think it's clear that the need for coordination is there. But I don't think we have to look too far from home to think about the importance of coordination, of working with other people. We just have to look at the recent Mama Sapano incident and the long-standing war in Mindanao, and you can feel that need, that desire for us to actually act and to work together with other people. And yet, when I think of what collaborative action means, I come, it's different, it's difficult to act. It's easier said than done. Because when I think about collective action, I almost feel like we're kind of, our world today is stuck in a sort of action paralysis, a contradiction where we want to reach out to other people who are different from us. We can see this in our social media accounts, in a desire to go all around the world. And yet, at the same time, we're not. We're limited to those accounts or maybe to just talking about those things. In a way, it's like we're screaming really loudly, but we're screaming into a pillow. We're loud, but we're muted. So what I hope to do today is to point out why coordination is important. And I'll be doing that not by giving a process, but rather to point out what happens when you don't coordinate. And from there, draw on a sketch kind of a precondition, a philosophical principle for what collaborative action should be. And in answering this question, I'll be reflecting on my experiences in Task Force Anti-Epeco, where I'm currently, where I first participated as a student in Ateneo, and now, two years later, a member, uh, part of the task force. So, first question then, what is Apeco? Apeco is an Aurora Pacific Economic Zone and Freeport Authority, a 12,923 hectare, Special Economic Zone based in Kasiguran. The farmers, fisher folks, and indigenous people oppose this project precisely because it threatens to displace them from the lands of their ancestors, the lands that they worked on, and the lands that they want to leave to their children. I'll just show a very short one-minute clip taken two years ago, taken at the height of the march, the 18-day march from Kasiguran to Manila. So hopefully we get a sense of what this issue is about. This is 8-year-old Norman, an Agda Dumagat from Kasiguran, Aurora. He lives along the shores of Barangay San Idelfonso in Kasiguran. But today, his playground is the seminary in Cabanatuan City, 220 kilometers from home. Norman is here with 118 other residents. They are on the 10th day of a 350-kilometer march from Aurora to Malacanang. They started marching on November 24 to protest the Aurora Pacific Economic Zone and Freeport Authority. APECO is a 12,000 hectare special economic zone that covers five barangays. It is the brainchild of the Angaras of Aurora. But marchers say it is legalized land grabbing. Ay pinipilit niya po kung bilhin sa amin ang lupa ng aming sinasaka sa halagang 60,000 per hectare lang po. Ang sabi ko po ay hindi ko binibinta ang lupa namin kasi po ang lupa ay ang buhay. Paano po kung kukunin nila sa amin niya, ano, paano na ang pamilya ko para na nilang pinatay kami? Now, I think the PECO issue is a great example to talk about because it clearly illustrates two ways of responding to the problem of difference, of human diversity. Uh, is it in the case of a PECO, is it uh, something that you can disregard? Or in the case of what the people of Kasigrun are arguing, it's essential. To paraphrase a, fame, um, a question of one of my philosophy teachers, Sir Kalazans, is collaboration in terms of relation to progress, is it a condiment or is it an ingredient? Is it like ketchup, something that's good but you can disregard if you need to? Or is it the ingredient or not a, and not a condiment, something so essential to the idea of progress, of reform, of democracy, that to disregard it is to make it and distort it and to make it into something else. What I'll be arguing to you today is that the PECO campaign is exact, a PECO issue is exactly what happens when you treat collaboration, working with other people as a condiment. Now, here's a picture of their march, of their 
18-day march from Kasiguran to Manila. Here they are singing Pananagutan as they entered into Baler. Next picture, please. Uh, here I am with other students of Ateneo, welcoming them two years ago, back when I still had an Afro, uh, welcoming into Ateneo. And um, so, anyway, when I think of the reason, and maybe it sounds, maybe 18 days is an abstract number. It's difficult to imagine what that means because maybe you've never walked that much, not even for a day. Next picture, please. Um, but I want you to put yourselves into their shoes, or more precisely, slippers. Imagine waking up every day at 5 a.m., walking until 8, 8 p.m., and knowing that you'll do the same thing tomorrow, and that each day as you walk, your feet become more calloused, more painful than the day before. And, you, and for each day that you walk, it's another day away from your family, your, your land, your loved ones. And you do all of this, go through all of this pain, not even knowing whether you'll get what you want, whether a peck will be stopped. What could drive people to do this? I think the reason why they reacted so strongly is because precisely what APEC was doing to their lands, that it's exactly what we think of when we think of um, what collaboration is not. Was it the project is essentially the product of a few elites who, thinking of what progress is, decide to impose it on the people who are most be affected by the issue without consulting them. But I think this lack, this, this, this refusal to, to work with other people is really at the heart of many of our problems today, many at, around the world and in the Philippines. But I don't want you to walk away just thinking that what happens in Apeco just happens in Apeco. That what happened in Mindanao just happened in Mindanao. Maybe the climate, the atmosphere of hatred and suspicion that seems to make mark our world today, maybe we contributed in some way. Maybe the way we treat other people, the way we act towards other people, it's a microcosm of all of these terrible things. When I think of my own life, my family and my friends would know me as a very private, incredibly shy person, that there are days when I just want to disappear and I don't want to talk to anyone. And I reflect on what that means and why I'm like that. And it's because when I see people around me, I know that they're not me, that they're like big question marks. They're not, they're different, and I don't know what they are. They're question marks not only in terms of who they are as people, what they want, what they think, what they want to say, but question marks in relation to me, what they're going to do to me, what they're going to say to me, what they're going to do to me. Isn't it, and isn't it part of instinctive, isn't it impulsive to react to threats or to question marks by removing it? Isn't it in our own life that we want to get rid of all these independent variables to make it as stable as possible? In my own life, that concretizes itself in a refusal to engage with other people. But in the case of Apeco, it means imposing what those answers might be. So maybe the answer really isn't, maybe the enemy isn't hatred, but it's fear. Fear towards the unknown. Fear towards the conflicting different ideas, religions and that are different from us, essentially. So given that I've talked about what collaboration means, or what it doesn't mean in an individual and institutional level, what does it look like? Next slide, please. Here I am with other members of Task Force anti -Apeco. And I really think this campaign is a picture of diversity. Because when I think of the, even the local task force, the local task force, i.e. the organizations based in Kasiguran, are made up of Farmers, and out of those farmers, there are different kinds. They're the ones, rice farmers, and there are coconut farmers. And then there are the fisher folks, and then there are the indigenous people. That alone is already a perfect act of collaboration because, as we all know, historical tensions have existed in the past between these different groups, between the land, and yet they're able to march together and fight for their advocacy. But the picture becomes even more beautiful when you take into account all of the national support groups which I'm part of. When I think of the students from Ateneo, from UP, from St. Scholasticus, who, become, who became involved in this issue. When I think of the lawyers who are involved in this issue. When I think of the foreigners from Switzerland who are actively supporting this issue. None of us had even heard of Kasiguran or Apeco prior to their involvement, yet here we are working with them. And I really think that maybe looking at the prince, that maybe analyzing this idea, this task force would give us a sense, a principle of what collaborative action looks like. Because from my experience, the reason why we're able to work with each other is because when we go gather, we're not trying, we accept that differences exist between us. That I'm a student, I'm from Manila, 
you're an indigenous person, yet we don't allow those differences to prevent collaborative action. Rather, we see, rather we treat people equally, even if they're different from us. But I don't think these differences disappear even when you work with people. I don't think collaboration, cooperation means homogenizing, getting rid of those differences, making people like you. I think what it really means is those questions still remain even after you work with them. Like in my case, I've been involved in this issue for two years, and there are some things that I don't understand, both on a conceptual and an emotional level. For example, why is land so important to the people of Kasiguran? Because if you talk to, to for example, Kuya Vic Abajo, na nagtadumagat of Kasiguran, he will tell you, uh, this isn't our form of development. Because development for us is being able to uh, take care of the land of our ancestors and being able to leave it to our children. I don't understand what that means exactly, because I'm a city boy. I grew up in Manila, I grew up in the States. You can put me anywhere and I'd be fine. You can put me in Quezon City, you can put me in Makati, and I'd be okay. Two years later, the feeling still remains the same. Even after spending time with the people, I still don't fully grasp what land means to them. And I think the same thing would also go for many of the other people in the National Task Force. They don't understand everything that the people are actually thinking about, and yet they're still there. The question is why. The differences are remain there. They're still there, but they're still part of the campaign. We're still working with them. And now I'm going to be a bit corny and say that maybe, just maybe, the differences that our mind can't understand or even grasp, our heart is able to accept and embrace. And I found this to be very true from my own personal experiences. I remember when, they were, when the marchers were going to, to uh, Manila, I was tasked by the organizations to prepare Ateneo for the, far, for the marchers. So this meant going room after room every day for about a week, talking to people about why this issue mattered. I was accompanied by Nanay Adarlina, a farmer from Kasiguran, and, Kuya, and Brother Armand, uh, Agta Dumagat. And every day, I would hear them say the same thing, essentially. Import, this land is, our land is important because this is the land of our ancestors and we want our kids to have it. And so conceptually, as I spend time with them, the questions still remain the same. Yet, in seeing them face to and seeing them for myself struggling, imagine going up to Atenistas and you're from Kasigura and you've never been, you've never been to Atene and you have to talk to people who don't care about your issue. Imagine how difficult that might be. Seeing them do that day after day made me think, wow, how important their land is really that important to them. So the conceptual questions still remain the same. Yet, I think maybe I don't say resolve, but I was able to accept those questions and become part of that game campaign precisely because of seeing how important it was to them face to face most of the time I spent with them that's why when the interesting thing about the campaign is years later many of uh, many of my many people who are also part of that campaign are still part of it even now and the question is why because when I came into this campaign it is really a question about I'm interested in political issues and it is a question about stopping economically unviable development projects that are exclusive that uh, out that don't respect the rights of farmers, fish folks, indigenous people. That still remains the same. But the difference is that it, became a, it no longer became about that, but also about protecting the land holdings of my friends, about making sure that Tatay Vic has, is able to leave something his kid, about making sure that Brother, that Brother Armand is able to send his kids to school with that land. It no longer became about stopping the issue itself, but protecting and helping out my friends. So when I think about what this APECO campaign really means, what I learned from it in terms of what collaborative action means, I've learned that it doesn't begin by erasing differences, but rather that accepting that differences exist and that collaborative action can only stem from there. So to clarify things, I'm not being a moral relativist. I'm not saying that we have to be kanya-kanya, you go your way, I go my way. No, that's not what collaborative action means. Rather, what it means that any actor or anything that to go that the answer to the common good can only be solved by the common people, which means talking with other people, which means talking with and working with each other. But I think this is easier said than done. Because from my own experience, when we go into this world, other people, people are different from us, are like big question marks. Question marks in terms of what they are and what they could do to you. The temptation here is to try to answer those question marks, box them in. So I think the challenge for us really is to f live with those question marks without turning them 
into periods without turning them into propositions. That's, a diff that's easier said than done, especially since we seem to live in a world right now that just incites hatred between people who are different. But I think we have to find a way to stop, to stop that. But, of course, it... Sorry, it's just hard to say. Because, I mean, even right now, I can feel that block. This is supposed to be a conference about coordination, about working with each other, yet right now, I'm at a, I'm at a loss for words on how to say what I want to say. Isn't that exactly the kind what we go through all the time in terms of our personal lives, in terms of how we deal with other people? So maybe, just maybe, the challenge for us now is to find a way to translate this kind of individual alienation we have into collective action, to find a way to translate our prophetic outrage, uh, sorry, our blind outrage into prophetic rage, to find a way of turning pessimism into activism. We have to break the myth that the only thing we can do in response to something like Mama Sapano is to post a really long Facebook message, get a few likes, get a few shares, and then just deal with it afterwards. And we do, we have, okay. So to wrap things up, I'll like to quote something I said when I was a student before, that maybe the only way to remove margin, to prevent, be, the only way for us to not marginalize other people is by working with, being with, and speaking with them, instead of being for, speaking for, and being for them. If you are to fight for oppressed women, for the people of Kasiguruan, let's do it as equals rather than as self-proclaimed saviors. Only by seeing our unequals, so-called unequals, as equals, can we finally become equal. When I think of Kasiguran now, before I used to think of it as a place far away with an economic zone, but now I think of it as, a play, as I think of the faces and families of my friends. Thank you.